Hi, and welcome to this week's Something for the Weekend. I'm Tony, sales manager here at Martin Lynch and Sons. And this week, we're going to be meeting Graham from BHI. So, over to you, Graham. What can you tell us about BHI? Uh, good morning, Tony, and uh, thank you for having me here at your amazing shop in Staines. Um, I've come to talk about uh, some of our noise cancelling products and maybe a little bit of history about BHI and, and where we started. Okay. Well, where did you start? Well, 2002, we uh, brought out one product, which was a little NES 10.2 noise cancelling speaker. Since then, through feedback from many amateurs and, and people who are always uh, free to give their advice, we've uh, added different features to different products and we have a whole range of noise cancelling inline units, uh, noise cancelling standalone speakers and also install modules that you can fit inside okay, your own so radio. Yourself, yeah. I used to have one of your original speakers actually um the noise cancelling speakers right with the, the old 10. 1062 yeah amazing yeah we've yeah, even got an get. upgrade of that okay. now so we can talk about that model yeah, later yeah, as brilliant. well yeah and uh you'll be looking forward to when we do a little demonstration as well because it's, it's all in the hearing isn't it it the is day, yeah so. i mean that's the way to thing is it's yeah. all well and good seeing it in an advert or online somewhere but you actually to hear it is to believe it and that's what we found when we do these sort of things is people say well i didn't realize it was that good yeah, I was going to say, we've had a few comments before in the past where people have said, is it still needed in this day and age because of the new way the radios are with noise reduction, etc. Now, I've played a play and it does enhance everything. As much as the manufacturers do great jobs with the noise reduction, you can't beat a standalone. You can't. No, I mean, to be fair, some of the newer radios from Icom and Yesu and Kenwood have got good noise cancelling mm. in. But to be able to get the best out of it, you've got to be a real expert. Yeah. Our systems are just plug and play. And because they're uh, based around speech extraction, we're already taking the speech, passing it through, and then removing the noise. So you're getting a really good yeah, processed yeah, yeah. audio. Yeah, that's what I've noticed with it. Like you said, newer radios, I can get it kind of roughly there, but never to the point I could do with the, the noise cancelling speakers that you do so uh, yeah it's yeah, because we're right in the audio path okay. on the outside at the end of the amplifier stage so whatever's left mm. the noise there we're there to clean that up okay brilliant and another good thing for it if you've got a classic radio bring it into the future yes definitely yeah. i mean we've got customers that are using it on drake even the old military clansman radios oh, really? you know they're finding using our noise cancelling makes a massive difference good. Because with those old yeah. radios, there was no noise cancelling, no. no filtering at all. Yeah, and as you know, we like to keep using them as amateurs. Always, yes, yes, yes. Always. As much as we spend money on new radios, we still love that old original yeah, radio yeah, that we had. Yeah. And, you know, it's yeah. the way to do it. And shortwave radios, etc. Yeah, I mean, for people that are listening, shortwave radios, you just uh, have a nice standalone DSP noise yeah. cancelling speaker, where, which is everything there or if you've got a nice extension speaker then you can use one of our inline okay. units to improve your shortwave it, it works across all bands yeah. because of how the dsp is looking for speech mm. and we always get asked this question you know will it work with my radio yeah. and the answer is yes okay. because it's looking between the whole spectrum the right, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, and looking sense. for speech Okay, uh, also mode wise, is it just SSB I can use it on or can I use it on FM, etc.? Uh, you can use it on all bands. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's very useful yeah. for even noisy FM, okay. even uh, we've sold uh, equipment to the, the uh, Coast Guard where oh, okay. they've got ships out with VHF and, and it just that bit further mm. away and there's a distress call. They've bought my, uh, our units so that they can just improve yeah. that call when someone's in distress and it, you know, it could save lives. Bit, yeah. I was going to say, now you've mentioned that something sort of outside of the amateur world, you do a lot of commercial stuff as well, I believe. We do. We've got yeah. some circuit board modules that we fit inside intercom systems. Okay. So, you know, um, Spanish air traffic control have taken our little modules and fitted it in their air traffic systems. Wow. Quite a big contract. We've got other commercial pizza car radio yep. comms for um, uh, motorsports. Motorsport, yep. um, and we've got other customers around the world using the modules for their own intercom systems. Wow. So, you know, we, we sort of you know, wherever there's a noise from a noisy environment to some another location, then we can do, we yeah. can do that. So it's nice that amateurs are basically getting commercial grade equipment to use, really. Definitely, definitely. Stuff, yeah, yeah. Shacks. yeah. Okay, well, we'll leave it there for now. 
we're going to be dipping in and out of your history. That's for sure. Because okay. I know quite an interesting guy. So <laughs> you know, keep a lot. Thank you. Keep a lot yeah. secret. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're going to get all of this clear and get it set up and maybe do some demos for the guys and girls. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So back with a full desk this time. Full desk, which is good. So. Um, as I said, we're going to do some demonstrations now with the BHO products and we're going to be looking at the EQ, parametric Parametric EQ, is that right? You correct me when I'm wrong. It's the Parapro EQ20 Para DSP. Um, it's the one with noise cancelling okay. and parametric equalisation. Um, What's parametric equalisation? Well, I don't mean to sound stupid. No. I should know, I know I'm selling your products, but yeah. There's a little story out. attached to this. Um, a few years ago, I was speaking with uh, Giles Reed from okay, the RSGB, yeah. who sadly passed away last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. But we were chatting about BHI having a tone control because okay. many amateurs were sort of saying, we want a tone control. We're, we're, our hearing's not as good. We want to lift some of the trebles. And Giles said, you don't want a tone control. I said, why not? He said, you want a parametric equaliser. So basically, a par parametric equaliser is different to like uh, a standard graphic equaliser mm -hmm. where you would boost and attenuate yeah, set frequencies. What a param parametric equaliser does is you have a rolling frequency, a centre frequency, and as you adjust the frequency, it goes along. So you can literally move the frequency that you want to boost okay. or attenuate. So say you've got a noisy signal and the speech is really bad, you want to boost the speech, you can attenuate that speech up to plus 10 b oh, dB, wow. so you can lift the speech yeah. out of the noise. But on the same token, if you've got some annoying tone, like, uh, I don't know, plasma TV, mm. power line noise, okay. if you've got that outside the speech just and it's annoying, you can actually do the same, but attenuate that noise and the speech stays there because That's you've good. moved the parametric to the frequency yeah or the main frequency of the power noise, and you're able to attenuate it to sort of minimise the effect yeah, of it yeah, and yeah. boost the speed. Kind of a seesaw effect yeah. in some ways. So um, that's where this is a cut above all our other DSP noise cancelling products, because you're able to use that parametric equaliser to boost the frequencies or attenuate yeah. the frequencies you don't want. OK. Nice and simple. Even I understood yeah. that. Even I understood that, and that's, that is something. So I'll tell you what, should we get the audio on the go? And well, let's get the audio yeah, on the see go. see what we can do. So, um, we're using the FTDX10, nice new modern radio, yep. and probably as we're going to see in a moment, I'll put it on the noisiest antenna I could find. Okay. <laughs> so, well, well, you've got to have a challenge. <laughs> you've yeah. got to have a challenge. Um, so. so, the connections of this unit are very simple. Mm -hmm. You have audio in, so you've got channel one, channel two, or stereo. What that means is you could have two separate mono radios coming in, left and right, uh, and then allow you to select from the front panel which radio you're using. In this case, we've just got the one radio, channel one. And then for the inputs, we've again enabled you a number of choices. We've got the pairs of banana plug inputs, so you could use the banana plugs that come with the unit as part of the kit, an extensive accessory kit, to connect to your own speaker. Or in this case, I've got a phono to three and a half mil adapter plug that you can plug your standard three and a half mil jack plug that you normally get with your extension speaker into. So that's what we've got at the back here. Um, around the front you then have the ability to adjust the input. Now we're on channel one so you've got channel one but you can flick between channel one channel two if that's the other radio you've got. Stereo, well stereo is useful if you have a stereo radio with A and B, so you can have a pair of speakers at the back and you can literally switch into stereo and listen for both sides of, you know, on, on two separate speakers. Um, the other one that's not lit up is a Bluetooth. Now, it only does Bluetooth on the input and the idea was to use some sort of Bluetooth uh, radios that have uh, Bluetooth on the output so this can take it on the input it doesn't have bluetooth on the output so if, as you said if i've got a dual receive radio yes with an a and b split yeah. two receivers yeah i can run both receivers in you can. and only use it on one if need be yes or both and that's just time, by right? the select at the front yeah cool makes sense and nice to see that we've got i can see that on there a diagram 
which is always handy. It just we'll, explains we'll a bit about that's the graphic. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Um, one thing to point out with this unit, if I turn it around again, is you have to keep the speakers separate. You can't have a speaker connected to your power supply like you get with some radios. That's only because it's got a Class D amplifier stage, which means you cannot join the grounds of the channels. They have to be left and right. Okay. This is common on lots of new audio equipment and the new radios. They all seem to have Class D amplifiers. Class D amplifiers, they basically have less heat sinking, so they save on space. Yeah. That's why they can f go in lots of new small radios. Okay, all right. Now we know a little bit more about it, and let's see in action. Let's see in let's action. See in action. So, so uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, turn the volume up. Turn the volume up. I can manage just about manage that and my skills. <coughs> okay, so we're going to. Have you got a certificate for that? I, I'm fully licensed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'll, uh, I'll bring that up now. Do I need to be looking at anything on the radio as I bring the AF um, up? If you turn the radio up too high, okay. if you keep turning, can you'll notice that? that the LED here will flash. Yep. That means you're overdriving the EQ okay. unit, and you just back it off. Right. Okay, that's as simple as that. Okay, so we're so good now that's in, we've got the volume there on okay. the EQ unit. So you're doing everything through the box now? I'm not yes. done on the radio. We're connected through a small okay. extension speaker here. That's a 20 watt LSPKR extension speaker that we supply to, to you. This is quite nice actually. So at the moment we don't have any speech, mm -hmm. but if I turn the noise cancelling up and it uh, rotates clockwise through the different levels, so you can hear the noise dropping away. So, so now, although there's no speech yeah. there, there's less nasty noise. Did you want to see I've, if you can find yeah, let's a see, signal? Yeah, I was going to say, let's see if I can find a signal. I can, and whether it's coming through on the mic as well, but I could hear then it dropped and I could actually hear other bits on the band. So I'm hoping that there's going to be some activity further up. Let me uh, lean over Fingers there. Fingers crossed. Whenever I do the um, demos at the um, exhibitions and sort of shows, I take a sound file. As people often ask me, but it's so difficult to get a signal. There we go. We always go. So we always go live here because we <coughs> find real oh, wells. It's a proper wells. demo. So, so yeah, exactly. There we you go. can gradually just about hear that, can't you? Yeah. If I turn the noise cancelling off, that's how noisy it is. If I now s slowly increase the noise cancelling. You can just about hear the speech. Now, with the parametric equaliser... Here we go. We might be able to boost that by increasing it to plus okay. 10, d, 10 d, dB. Look at that. Where's he come from? <laughs> so I've, I've turned both the bass and the treble mm. up by plus or minus 10 dB. So now we're trying to lift that speech out of yeah. the noise. Again, you can hear, if I turn the noise cancelling off, that's the level of noise we've got. And it's not... I know with a lot of the early DSP products, it was quite wishy-washy. Yeah. It was like a watery sound, but it doesn't... We don't seem to be... No, that, you, so you can weak. still yeah. get that if you have a really weak signal. Okay. There are limitations. And for you, it's a trade-off of, yeah. if I turn this noise cancelling up full, then you start getting some of those tones. It's, yeah, so it's you, not horrendous. It's not... No. I've heard... Yeah. It's not too bad no. compared to other DSPs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, because good. our technology is based around speech mm. extraction, when the speech is found, you're getting that across the yeah. whole bandwidth. You're not using other sort of frequency effects where you knock out the noise, but, and then by doing so, you take out chunks of uh, yeah. audio. Okay. Do you want to see if you can find it? Yeah, it's, it's all, I told you, it's always the way. Yeah. Always the way. That's with no noise cancelling. Level one, two, three. Yeah, you do get a bit of No noise cancelling. 
you can drive the you can, you can drive the electric car and I can shoot off the Merc and not think twice about it. Now, I want to show you, the, if I can, the difference in the blue, uh, the uh, tone control. I've now gone minus 10, dim, 10 dB. I'm now going to go plus 10 dB. So you can hear it's a bit crisper. Noise cancelling off. Noise cancelling back on, about level three or four. Now I notice when you're doing this, because I get a lot of comments of people going, I can't get it to work. So small increments as you're yes. going up and just yeah. bring yeah. it in gently and, yeah. and yeah, listen to it. Okay. And then you listen to what suits you really. Yeah. You know, some people still like a bit of residual noise. Mm -hmm. You know, if I turn the noise cancelling fully up, you do get these watery effects mm. and some people don't like that. Yeah. It's silent, almost like a squelch. But that's, I mean, that's just from what you're doing there, it's nice that you, you can literally tailor it to whatever you want. Yeah, so if I back yeah. it off a bit. The range is amazing. You know, it's just up yeah. to the user, really. Yeah, it's to what you want. Oh, that's great. As I said, it's always in the, in the hearing. Yes. With, yeah. with these products, it's all very well us saying, yeah. oh, we've got this product. But Let me just turn that, it that down a good. minute. Yeah, one of the that, reasons yeah. why this is so good is we get phone calls uh, all the time. I had one yesterday, an amateur who was going to give the hobby up. Okay. And we, he'd heard about the EQ20 DSP units, and I explained what it did. And I think he, 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 he bought one because it will allow him to boost those frequencies yeah. that his hearing is lost. Yeah. Uh, and also attenuate noises as well, so it's going to help improve. Okay. And that was the whole reason for the parametric equaliser. Yeah, it's literally moving that centre frequency to suit your own hearing. Yeah. Well, I, the difference between, as I was saying earlier, about the radios built in DNR, etc., yeah. was that you could just adjust it to whatever you want. Yeah. And, that, and you could hear it, hear the yeah. difference, like yeah. I said. With the tones and especially. in real time, that's the whole yeah. point. Um, yeah. You you do get um, if the radio, say if you transmit sometimes, depending on the radio, then you release the PTT. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, I get a big whoosh. Yeah. All that is is the noise cancelling kicking in again. Yeah, coming back on. Yeah. I mean, what I say to customers there is turn the noise cancelling off. Yeah. So you'll get, you won't get the whoosh, and then you just slowly increase the noise cancelling again. Yeah. I know it's difficult if you're having a conversation with someone. Yeah. Uh, you know, on a call, but you know, it, it yeah. does work. Um, but then, hopefully, if it's a long yeah. rag chew, like you said, and they're sitting on yeah. 80 meters, they're going to have it set up and they're, yeah. they're going to know their, yeah. their settings, yeah. aren't they? Hopefully, yeah. on the way down. At the front here, there's also a 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone socket. Okay. So, you know, you can listen quietly in um, a room if you don't want other people to listen. Um, and we, um, we've got um, adapters as well that suit you. So if you've got a quarter inch, you can buy an adapter lead or adapter. If you know if your headphones are a quarter inch. Okay. Now, like I said, I've used one of your products before in the past. Yeah. Now I know you do an inline module, which I've seen a few people have got. Yep. Do I need to buy one of these and basically throw my bit away? No. Or... <laughs> in a word, no. If you have one of our inline units. Yeah dual in line, compact in line. We have got a noise cancelling free version. This is the EQ20 and it's identical to this, but it doesn't have noise cancelling in. So it allows you to connect in line with your BHI unit. Um, not really the speakers, although there's way around that, but it's mainly for the in line units. So you'd go either out of the radio into this yep. and from this to the BHI inline yeah, unit, okay. or vice versa, whatever suits the output. But essentially, you don't have to buy another noise cancelling okay, unit good. and making the one you've yeah. got redundant. You can just get the parametric equaliser unit. Uh, 10 watts per channel, actually, um, and the audio is very good if you wanted just to listen to something else apart from amateur yeah, radio. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I was going to say, with this, if I don't have the modules or anything else, can I still buy this and use this by itself? You like, can. As an e yeah, no, as I've got customers that are in areas where they don't have a noise problem, yeah. but they wanted to boost and, and, and just, audio, yeah, and, yeah. and they bought the EQ unit. So, Perfect. you know, um, you can. Yeah. There are two versions of both these units. 
I don't know if you saw, there's another LED there, it says Bluetooth. And I think I mentioned that's Bluetooth on the input. Yeah. Now, when I'm in my shack and I'm not listening to radio, I actually play my Amazon or my iPhone music okay. through to my speakers, and yeah. the audio quality is amazing. So you get full 10K, you yeah. know, the full spectrum, and, and you can just listen to music so on we, Bluetooth. We know you're into your music, Graham, oh, well, as well. Yes. yes. Well, Let's not go there. You're going to go, go there. We're not going to any stories there. <laughs> so... Right, so that's that covered. You said the inline modules, they're still available if anyone wants to do their own, maybe install into a speaker or anything like uh, that. We've got, got a, like uh, we've got a or... new um, PCB version okay. that um, has superseded the older one, mm. and basically you can retrofit it into a loudspeaker. Uh, so any of the extension speakers you sell from yeah. Kenwood, Yosu, Icom, even some of the smaller ones, complete mounting kit with sticky pads, and literally, you're breaking the line between the speaker inside the yeah. extension speaker and the input, and you're fitting that in, comes with a cable, with power. Okay. Um, could I do it? Because you know what I'm like. You could do it. I uh, mean, I have got one I can show you yeah. um, and, and get out. Okay, yeah, we can, we, we can grab one of those. So if you bear with us a second, we're going to grab one of those, and yeah, I think we'll take a quick look at that. We've uh, set up the speakers that we were talking about, which is the... Basically, it's a, this is a standard speaker, isn't it? That's what you were saying. This is a standard Icom. Yeah. This one's an Icom speaker, yep. an old one, a bit dented, a bit beaten okay. up because it's my demo one. But effectively, we have this module called the e NEDSP 1962KBD. And what you see is you get, you get a complete wired unit with a power connector and a, a screw for the rear. Mm -hmm. You get push buttons and an LED and you get the input and output wires. And effectively what you're doing is you're going to break the speaker connection from there to the rear, drill a couple of holes, and you'll get this. I'm going to show this to the camera. That is where the push buttons go. They can go anywhere you like. And then on the rear of the unit, you can see there's a power socket there. That's all just on the wiring loom. So you literally, the one drilled hole at the back and then drilling holes for a suitable place. The templates for all these, or for those ones anyway, are in the user manual. Okay. So you can get those from the so user it, manual. Everything you need is there, bar the tools, well, basically. Yeah. yeah, you even get this amazing uh, kit with all the labels, sticky pads. These sticky pads have got these PCB mounting posts. So if I turn that back up again, and you can, I don't know if you can zoom in and see, the PCB's mounted inside and that's how you'd mount it in your own loudspeaker in a suitable place. It looks like it's going to be an easy install, even I could probably do. It is a pretty easy install. Oh, in fact, some of the radios that have got filters, oh. you can actually use the filters yeah. still. So, like, if you happen to be doing some CW, um, then you can, you know, do the, yeah. the cuts. Okay. Now, what this does have is has a bypass function. Yeah. So. Actually, when the power's not there, or you, and it's just an extension speaker, then you don't even you don't have, have to have, have it on. No current draw. No. So if you're portable, so, and you've got a smaller speaker or whatever, yeah. it doesn't or matter. Or you're on FM, so and you don't need noise cancelling, you don't need to turn okay. it on. So to power it on, you literally press the button on the top. Yeah. It then goes to its last known level, mm -hmm. and then on the top there, you can see I'll hold that, you press... That scrolls between the levels, and then a momentary press between the noise cancelling on and off. OK, Do you so wanna, is this um, off? It's off now. Oh, well, let's see. Let's, have a so go. let's, let's hope the, uh, the guy's still on the radio. Cause, uh, I bet he's gone. <laughs> As I said, we're always real world here, so they yeah. sometimes disappear. Yeah. Oh, OK. So, noise cancelling on. Oh, uh, that's a big difference already. Noise cancelling. Noise cancelling. Yeah. Off. Okay. And on. So you've got rid of most yeah. of the noise and you can hear him still. Off.
Of course, this noise cancelling yeah. is in all our products. Yeah. So if you didn't want to or didn't feel like you wanted to ruin your lovely speaker, you could get one of our standalone inline units that will work with your speaker. So you just plug it in and sit it next to it. The new newest inline module is actually um, quite useful because you can almost stick it on the top or side yeah. with yeah. Velcro and, 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 and the buttons are at the front. So that would work and, well. And I suppose you could run it for a mixer of some sort as you can well. Do. So some you, people do, yeah. You've got mul multiple radios and speakers. Yeah. You can, yeah, yeah. mix it through. The um, dual in line and the compact in lines lend themselves to being used with mixers because they've got okay. line in, line out. Yep. So you could go audio in and then line out. So, you know, you've got that option. Okay, that's great. Um, so we've seen the noise cancelling. Is it just speakers and in line things? I mean, a lot of people don't like to use a speaker in the shack because of yeah. people listening, etc. It might be late at night that they're operating for DX. Do you do headphones or anything like we've that? We've got or? a couple of pairs of headphones okay. that are very popular. We've got the basic HP1 headphones, 1999. They're yeah. good quality, they're good on your ears. Uh, and then we've got the noise cancelling headphones mm -hmm. and the good news is we've recently reduced the price by okay. ten pounds. So instead of thirty nine ninety. Even better news. Yes. Because I knew that you did headphones and I've actually Oh okay. got a pair here. <laughs> Pots of one side. So, so uh, um, these are our I'm gonna set you up for that one a little bit, Graham. Noise cancelling headphones. <laughs> so you get the noise cancelling headphones has a battery housing here. They come with a battery, one single AAA goes in there. Um, and then you put the battery in, okay. you've got a lead that plugs into the side. Right, there we go. There we go. Um, and um, they're very good. The noise cancelling switch on the side, side yeah. there. They are not specifically amateur radio yeah. as such, but if you were doing some sort of, um, I don't know, um, station where there's lots of people around, um, a competition, yeah. then they would be useful because they'd block out the hubbub behind, around, behind the thing, yeah. Uh, I've with the noise cancelling. I've often used them in the in the sales room sometimes to cut off the other Perfect. stuff. Perfect. Uh, um, I use mine when I'm flying. Um, then, you know, for what they are, they're very good value um, and they do remove quite a lot I of mean, noise. That is so, a, films on a plane, on a train. Exactly. I mean, I'm known for this, so I will wear them. They're quite comfortable, they are, aren't actually, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah nice headband as well, yeah. which is good. So, you know, they're now only twenty nine ninety five. Yeah, they're good. And again, if I wanted that DSP technology, I'd just run this with a little inline unit. Is that right? Uh, you could plug that into yep. the headphone socket of the inline unit you're using mm -hmm. and take the benefit of yep. not only the noise cancelling in the BHI noise cancelling. This is active well. noise reduction. Okay, brilliant. This is the sort of where you have two microphones nulling out. Yeah, we've seen, yeah. Um, so mainly for when you're okay. on an aeroplane or travelling or in a noise environment. But you could use that with your... With the other bit and it yeah. still work. Okay, brilliant. But yeah, they're a good... I mean, Christmas is coming. Christmas, yes. Christmas is coming. Oh, and wanna... if you're not watching this at Christmas, birthdays I didn't want to mention Christmas. Birthdays it's like, are coming. I, I can't put it off. <laughs> and my but wife yeah, tries to get me That's a good little involved. stocking filler. That's a good stocking filler. And they are. They're nice... Yeah, nice weight to them. Yeah. So, yeah, I like that. Right, let me pop those back. And the other good thing I will say, and well done, being a manufacturer, that gives you instructions. Yes. Because far too often, you never get instructions. So that's great. And pop them down there. All right. Have you got anything coming before we wrap up? Is there anything coming in the future that we might want to know we about? We are working on some newer products. Um, don't tell us too much, obviously. Uh, no. Uh, so yeah, we, we don't want to rest doing it. <laughs> we, we're always listening to feedback yeah. uh, from amateurs, from everyone, and um, that makes a big difference in what mm -hmm. we develop. Yeah. So yeah, there's new products coming, hopefully in the new year. Okay, brilliant. But current range, all available at the moment, obviously from Martin Lynch and Sons, and support-wise, I've got to say, Graham, out of all the manufacturers, very supportive of your products. Thank you. And for our customers as well, because if there's something that we don't know, we don't always know everything. We always say that. We, we try and help you as much as we can. But Graham's always there with an answer for us if, if need be. Yes, it's a philosophy. Yeah. If you have a customer in the shop or phones you up, mm -hmm. get them to phone me yeah. because they've got a question, an issue. We need to sort it. 
Yeah. You know, and that keeps them coming yeah, back. Happy customer yeah. at the end of the day, which is what we all want. Yeah. You know, it's a technical thing. product, and yeah. there are little things, you know. Uh, some people ask about mm. the noises, should I hear this, should I, you know, and yeah. you just allay their fears, and they're happy. Well, that's, that's what we appreciate from you, because for us, it's all very well them say, well, I've got this strange noise, and I've got this... The, the main thing we need in support and the customers need is that technical knowledge yeah. as to why, which... Yeah, I mean, just from this demo today, I've learned a lot about how oh, that good. works, and yeah. that's, you know, I was one of those people that used to get it and grab it and just twist yeah, the knobs yeah, and go, oh, yeah. was that not working? But right. now it's explained. It's yeah, a lot of people don't clearer. read the manual. No. And, well, we um, don't. We're amateurs. Come know, on, Graham. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we're all guilty for that. We're yeah, all guilty yeah. for that. That's for sure. But no, I appreciate that. Are you gonna? Oh yeah, that is true. What's that? I've just been reminded, because Henry has to do this with me very often and reminds me of things. You're coming to the Open Day, aren't you? Yes. So uh, uh, when is that, Tony? 25th of November. Um, I was going to say a time, but Martin always makes the time up anyway. But basically, if you come down, the guys uh, will be here from probably about half past eight or so yeah. on a Saturday. So get yourself down here. Obviously, we give you food and you get uh, drink as well. And it's free. Yeah, no, I've it's been free. I've been to them before, and they're usually great events, yeah. and it's a good chance to meet people. Yeah. I'll be here with a live demo, so anyone wants to come and uh, hasn't been sold on what I've done today, come down and have another chat. You with need me to, I was going to uh, say you need to hear it because I'm not sure if it came through okay on the mic, but the difference, even with this, where there's not as much adjustment, it was. You haven't got the parametric, yeah, but the noise cancelling does yeah. its stuff as well. Yeah, you know. just straight in and yeah, yeah could hear the guy, brilliant. Good. So great. I'm glad I was able to come down today. Yeah, that's good, and we look forward to seeing you on the open yeah. day. And yes. uh, as I said, if you want to come down to the open day, you don't need to book, you don't need to buy tickets, you don't need to do anything like that. Literally just turn up on the 25th of November here at the store in Staines, and we'll be waiting for you. Um, Lunch is normally lunchtime, which is great. Yes. It's quite good, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, we yeah. Thought, so. We feel well of that. The food's usually pretty good, actually, yeah. Oh, thank is, you. It's a Saturday, isn't it? It will be a Saturday, Saturday yeah, yeah. So, fingers crossed. Loads of parking. We're not in the ULES zone, so you don't have to worry, worry about that at all. Um, and, yeah, we want to see you again. A bit like the Open Day we had the other week, but this is on a bigger scale. And it's just great to see loads of amateurs great. together. Look forward and if to you're it. not an amateur, shortwave listener, aviation, whatever, come down. It's a good day. See you thank soon. You. Thank you, Graham. Yeah, cheers. No that. worries. Thank you, Tony. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.